it's hot, it's rainy. Yes, we're in the thick into the middle of summer. So when it comes to eating and drinking, finding the right flavors and texture are important, especially when it comes to wine. So joining us to help find the perfect light wine that is still delicious is sommelier Jackie H from Sea Salt St. Pete. Hello, Jackie. Hello. To that point, I'm a cab girl. I love cabs and I almost am feeling like Roxanne, you've got to switch it up in the summertime. You need to lighten it up. That's how you can help us. Well, I was to say, we had you drink a little bit of rosé earlier. How was that? Yeah, I don't say no to any kind of wine. Fair enough. <laughs> it was, Fair it enough. was delicious. A woman after my own heart. <laughs> Let me just chime in right there. So we do. We have some nice summertime selections. And speaking of reds, you don't have to give up your red. Uh, but I brought some lighter uh, just choices, some grapes. So we're kind of sticking to the burgundy. The um, When I talk about burgundy, I'm talking about basically where the grapes originated. I've got some nice Pinot Noirs over here. I've got one from California, one from Oregon, but the one I really want to talk about today is Gamay, and it is the southernmost region of Burgundy. It's Beaujolais. It's just a lighter drinking wine. It's kind of like Pinot Noir's little sister. Mm -hmm. oh, Beautiful, okay. pairs beautifully with food, uh, nice floral notes. The fruit's really pretty. You can serve it about 57 degrees, so it's cooler. Right. Wonderful for our Florida weather. And then I brought some other selections. You know me, Natalie, well, I mean, bubbles. I, I, you know she's going bubbles. I, I want to get back to this red. When you talk uh -huh. about like burgundy and those things, I just automatically like the word sounds heavy to me. So I, I need to not be scared of the word, right? Don't be scared of it. And, and you know, that got used were jug wines back in like the 70s. They called the white wine was Chablis, mm -hmm. the red wine was Burgundy. Not an accurate representation at okay. all of what those wines truly are. Okay, okay good. So now, what about when it comes to your wine not tasting quite right, when it oh. goes bad? What are the factors that are going to make your wine? You know, I hold on to wine right. longer I than you tell you me do. to, Jackie. It's good to hold on to it, just not opened, right? Yeah. Exactly, and that's storage. And so that's maybe the first one we should talk about because it is hot. And I think one of the biggest ones that we run into in Florida is we're just not stirring our wines at proper temperature. You get them home, or maybe you don't get them home, and you leave them in the car too long. You've got a lot of errands. You ladies have kids. You get caught up, uh -huh. and mm -hmm. you open it up, and you're like. Hmm. Not quite right. Is Sauvignon Blanc supposed to taste like jam? No, <laughs> oh. it's not. <laughs> Spritzy, so yeah. that's, that's an example of what heat can do. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is uh, cork taint, which you hear a lot about. Basically, you're going to pull the cork. It smells kind of like a musty basement, and that has to do with a chemical reaction with uh, some fungi that naturally occur in cork, but there's no mistaking it. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not I, harmful. I know what you're talking about. But save the bottle, take it back to your retailer, mm -hmm. and they'll give you another one. So is it a myth? Because I feel like the thing that I'm always worried about is if it like changes to vinegar. Is that a thing? That That's, you know, again, that could be improper storage. It could be a lot of different, it could be people like you that open your wine and leave it open a little too long. And then you can make salad dressing out of it though. That's I what have you heard do. that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, but the other two you good. say are more common. So that's good to know. Those are the ones we hear about the okay. most. And, and to be honest with you, that's a strong argument for buying two bottles when you go out, because you have to have a backup, right? Good point. <laughs> I'm loving that. I've never yeah, thought of that, Jackie. Get an Jackie. extra bottle in case the one's bad. I've never thought of that. And then one surprise, it's right. not. You've got to. You've got to. Just for storage, for temperatures, for reds, for example, does it vary or is there a range? And You know, I, like white white. cellar temperature, we've talked about this before, is about 67 degrees. Okay. Uh, again, some of the reds you can serve cooler. White's usually around 40. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're putting your red in the fridge, that's perfectly fine. Not everybody has a wine refrigerator. Pull it out a little early, kind of touch the bottle. You can tell. You know what temperature you like your wine at. It's fine. It's not going to mm -hmm. hurt your wine. She's made me feel so much better about the red in the fridge. I, I got to say, there was always like a connotation. I thought I never could do that until we started working with Jackie. And you know what, Jackie, in closing, too, I know you did bring one that you want to try. I did. This is Junko. It's a Vermentino. It is from Sardinia, which is an island off of the west coast of Sicily. Ooh. This is a great, uh, really, again, warm weather wine. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about you when I got this one, Natalie, because if you're a red wine drinker, this is a, red, a white wine that's a little fuller on the palate. Okay. It really appeals to red wine Cheers, drinkers. Cheers, Jackie. Cheers. Thanks Thank for coming so in. Put you the yeah. test here. That's good. That's mm -hmm. very good. Oh, and you know I'm not a wine. There you go. Tips away. Wines to try. Jackie, love when you're here.